Okay. Um, so what is the what is the problem? It's like one over. Yeah. Minus one half. Yeah. All divided by x. Okay, and am I looking at zero? Limit as x goes to zero. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, what do you do? Um, you plug in zero, you try direct substitution, which is what you should always try first. It doesn't work, because you divide by zero. It's like, well, how can you fix this? Well, one thing that we can do is get rid of this comp complex fraction because I don't know about you all, but a fraction is bad enough, but inside of another fraction, it's even worse. And there's actually two of them inside of a fraction. So let's see if we can fix that, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is use this property that says, um, that's weird, there we go. Um, that says this, if I have, um, let's call it A over X, okay? I can rewrite that as a over one times one over x. That seems fine. That's like unmultiplying the fractions, right? It's just so zoomed in. There we go. Yeah, much better. All right. And then I can just write that as a times one over x. Are we good there? Comfortable with that? Okay. So I'm gonna do that. This is my a right here, okay? So what I'll have is the limit as x approaches zero, uh, well, uh, I guess I'll keep the order the same. So I've got this one over two plus x minus one half times one over x. All right, so we'll keep going here. This is a, this does not fix the problem really because if I plug in zero, I still get a divide by zero error. So I still gotta keep working on this. My technique is going to be common denominator. That's sort of my only option. I can't factor and simplify because there's nothing to factor or everything that's there is already factored. So I have this two plus X, I have this two, and the math is gonna get really ugly now because I didn't leave enough space, but um, I'm, I'm ignoring this for now, okay? So I'm ignoring the one over X. I'm just working on these two fractions here. And the question is, what, what is my common denominator? Well, I look at this first fraction, it has a two plus X in the denominator. It does not have a two, a factor of two. Okay, so it needs a two, so I'll give it a two. But you can't just write two and then not like fundamentally change everything. So you need to write two over two because that's the same as multiplying by, by one, okay? And that's fine, we can multiply by one as, as often as we want. So then you look over here to this other one and you ask yourself, well, what does that function uh, or that fraction need for a denominator? It needs a two plus x but you can't just multiply by two plus X, you have to multiply by two plus X over two plus X. Sorry, this is getting really um, jumbled here. Let's rewrite what we've got then. We've got the limit as X approaches zero. This first fraction, I've got two in the numerator divided by two plus X, uh, sorry, two times two plus X minus, and in the numerator here, I'll have two plus X divided by two times two plus X. That's all times one over X, okay? All right, so then it's like, don't make this mistake. Sometimes I will see students do this and they'll be like, oh, look at this, two over two, that's one, and they'll cancel it out and then they'll write the next line. It's like, no, we just put that there because we needed it. Don't take it away, right? So let's, now that we have a common denominator, as you can see uh, here, and here, now I can combine those fractions together. It's like taking seven halves minus four halves. Like you can subtract them when the denominator is the same. So I've got this, the limit as X approaches zero of two minus two plus X. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do some things all in one step here. Two minus two, that would be zero. Minus X, that's just minus X. So I'm gonna have this, minus X divided by two times two plus X. All that multiplied by one over X. Now this next step, you don't really need to show, but I'm going to because, well, one, I'm recording it, um, and I want it to be recorded so that students can see it. But um, you could just right now slash the X's, X over X simplifies away, but I'm gonna make it even more explicit. So I'm gonna write this, limit as X approaches zero, and I'm gonna multiply these two fractions together. When you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So I get negative one X, divided by two times X times two plus X. Oh, looky, 
x over x is 1 over 1. Fantastic. So now I can write this. The limit as x approaches 0 of negative 1 over 2 times 2 plus x. Now I can try direct substitution. Honestly, I should have been trying to direct substitution after every line of algebra, but you can see that we're going to have a divide by 0 every time up until this moment right here. Now, if I try direct substitution to evaluate the limit, I think I'm going to win because I'm not going to get a divide by zero error. You don't need the limit, Cresswell. Stop. Okay, so plug in zero. I'm going to get negative one over two times two plus zero. And that is negative one fourth. Cool.